All right, I want to welcome all our witnesses uh, on our second uh, panel. On this panel, uh, we have Mr. Richard Sarles, who's the interim general manager of Metro, who was appointed uh, by the board of directors and began his duties March 29th of this year. Ms. Welcome, Mr. Sarles. Uh, we have Mr. Peter Benjamin, uh, who's the chairman of the Metro Board of Directors and a member of that board since 2007. Welcome, Mr. Benjamin. Uh, Mr. Matt Bassett, uh, who's the chairman of the Tri-State Oversight Committee of Metro, referred to as TOC. Uh, Ms. Jeter, uh, Ms. Jackie Jeter, who's the president of the Alma uh, Amalgamated Transit Union Local 689. Uh, welcome. Uh, and Mr. David Alpert, who's the vice chairman of the Metro Rider Advisory Council. Thank you all for appearing before the committee today. As you heard from the first panel, it's the custom of this a committee to swear in the witnesses. If you could please all stand and raise your right hand as I administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Let the record reflect that all witness answered in the affirmative. Uh, at this time, each of you will have uh, five minutes uh, to deliver your uh, oral statement. Uh, as you heard, the yellow light means you have one minute uh, remaining. The red light uh, means stop. Uh, Mr. Sarles, as you begin your testimony, let me just uh, uh, congratulate you on your new assignment. Obviously, you're coming into a very, very uh, tough uh, situation, uh, but we are all, I think, uh, looking forward to working with you to make sure that the Washington Metro system uh, is as safe and as reliable and as efficient uh, as possible. With that, if you could please uh, begin. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Bill Bray and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. I am Richard Sarles, General Manager of the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, known as WMATA or Metro. I became Metro's General Manager less than a month ago. In my first few weeks here, I have met with employees, customers, and other stakeholders, and I have reviewed the findings of oversight agencies. Based upon those meetings and findings, we have drafted a six-month action plan to move Metro forward in addressing our greatest challenges, which I see as safety, service reliability, and budget. Let me begin with safety. We have taken a number of actions in recent months to improve safety, including, for example, hiring a new chief safety officer and adding 12 new positions to our safety department. We now have safety officers assigned to each bus and rail division to improve communications between safety and operational personnel. And we are working hard to improve the safety of our track workers. We established a working group which includes several metro departments as well as union representatives and others. That group is creating a new roadway worker protection manual and developing a new roadway worker training plan. While we have made progress with regard to safety, we still have work to do. We have established the following six safety related priorities for the next six months. One is to fill the remaining safety department vacancies and increase training. Two, continue the accelerated closeout of open safety related audit findings. Let me say here that I am particularly focused on responding to the recommendations in the FTA audit. Our action plan is attached to my written testimony. Three, develop an incident tracking and safety management reporting system. Four, encourage near-miss reporting, including publicizing our anonymous employee safety hotline and strengthening whistleblower protection. Five, complete a new right-of-way worker protection manual and revisions to the Metro Rail Safety Rules and Procedures Handbook. Six. Complete a self-assessment of safety-related internal controls and initiate a thorough assessment of safety culture. Turning to the reliability of our service, I think it is fair to say that the quality of our customer's experience is the key to the continued success of our system. We are taking steps to improve the on-time performance of all our modes, as well as the availability of our elevators and escalators. Still, we can do better. We have established the following six priorities for improving service reliability over the next six months. One. Increase training for frontline employees and supervisors. Two, create transparent, perf transparent performance tracking and reporting systems. Three, revise inspection and maintenance procedures to reflect changes in operations. Four, pile a new schedule adjustment on the red line. This new schedule will allow for more time for customers to board trains that are busiest stations and will involve more eight car trains running to the ends of the line. Five, initiate an external assessment of elevator, escalator maintenance and repair programs. Six, Continually re-emphasize safety and state of good repair as top priorities. Maintenance of vehicles, tracks, structures, signals, and other infrastructure in a good state of repair has a direct impact on the safety and reliability of the metro operation. 
the most effective action we can take to improve reliability is to improve the physical condition of our system. This leads me to a topic which has a direct effect on our ability to improve service reliability, Metro's budget. Fiscal year 2011 is likely the most difficult year, financially speaking, that Metro has ever had to face. The economic slowdown means that ridership and revenue are down while costs have continued to rise. This imbalance created a $189 million gap in our fiscal year 2011 operating budget. Tomorrow, the Metro Board will begin considering how to close the budget gap. Without knowing what they will decide, it is fair to say that balancing Metro's budget will require hard choices. The economic downturn has affected everyone in this nation, and unfortunately, Metro is not immune. National economic conditions will have an impact on our capital budget as well. Funding constraints require Metro to limit our capital program for the next six years to only the most critical, must-do projects, such as replacement of our oldest rail cars and buses. We will not be able to make the other improvements to our service, such as running additional eight-car trains. Over the next six months, we intend to accomplish the following objectives related to Metro's budget. One, educate policymakers, customers, and members of the public about their role in funding Metro. Two, implement the board-approved 2011 budget. Three, manage the transition of our next six-year capital program currently being developed, including responding to any recommendations in the final NTSB report on the June accident. Four, initiate a discussion with regional and federal stakeholders on Metro's long-term fiscal out outlook to identify both challenges and solutions. The basic challenge is, is this. The Metro system must be brought into a state of good repair. Unless there is renewed commitment to this goal, the system will continue to degrade. Mr. Chairman, six months from now, I intend to deliver an interim performance assessment report to the Metro's board. But you not, do not have to wait till then to, to, until then to track our progress. We're developing products that will allow the public to see how we're doing. We expect to launch the first of those monthly vital signs reports shortly. We're committed to improving transparency and communication with our customers and other stakeholders, including Congress. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Bill Bray, and members of the committee, I've worked for the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority for 25 years, a system to which I am very dedicated. And I'm pleased to appear before you today as the Chairman of the Board of Directors to speak with you about one of my favorite subjects. Metro's job is not to run buses and trains, it's to move people, to connect origins and destinations, to create transportation alternatives for the region, and to support the operations of the federal government. It is to get people to work, to school, to the Rayburn Building, and to the zoo. Most of the people who ride Metro bus and Metro, Metro rail are not dependent upon transit. They own cars. They will ride Metro only if it is safe, clean, reliable, comfortable, and at a reasonable price. Our challenge is to provide that safe, clean, reliable, affordable service. At the same time, we need to improve our communication with our riders so that they have a better understanding of Metro's limitations. We have a 34-year-old rail system, which is not like it used to be when it was new. It has old rail cars, track bed, power equipment, and communication systems. More than half of our bus garages are over 50 years old, and some buses are 15 years old. As the equipment and facilities age, they become less reliable, break down more often, and need more maintenance. We will have more service disruptions and delays than when the system was new. Planned ones to rehabilitate the infrastructure and unplanned ones because of reduced equipment reliability. And we need to ensure that our customers are informed and prepared for that reality. Above everything else, we must provide safe and reliable service. And in the past year, we've had accidents which have shocked and saddened all of us. We need to focus on three goals. We need to build a new safety culture throughout the organization from the board and the general manager to the bus and rail operators, mechanics, and track walkers. We need to invest in the equipment, facilities, and personnel needed to enhance safety. And we need to create the policies and procedures that enhance system safety. In doing so effectively, we will restore public confidence in the safety and quality of our service. 
and we will rebuild trust among policymaker, legi policymakers, legislators, and other stakeholders. I know that these goals will not be achieved overnight, but we are determined to accomplish them. Metro faces the same financial issues which practically every other major transit system in the United States does. In this period of economic decline, many of our revenue sources, such as advertising and fares, have decreased, and the funds available for our subsidies have declined. Transit systems throughout the country with dedicated sources of subsidies, such as sales taxes, have seen those funds decline and have, to, have had to cut staff, reduce service, and increase fares, as well as defer capital projects in order to use those funds to fill operating gaps. Those transit systems which look to local governments to provide subsidies, as we do at Metro, find those governments dealing with lower tax revenues and the need to cut governmental services. Transit becomes one of a number of vital services that must be funded with fewer resources available. We are exceptionally pleased that our state and local funding partners have demonstrated a long history of strong financial support for this system. That strong support is continuing even in these tough economic times. As our jurisdictional part partners are proposing to provide over a half billion dollars to support metro operations in fiscal year 2011, 2011. <clears throat> At a time when the Maryland Transportation Trust Fund is woefully short of revenue and the state is reducing its highway expenditures drastically, that state, which I represent on the Metro Board, will be increasing its operating contribution to Metro in 2011. Metro's capital needs inventory identifies investments totaling $11.4 billion over the next 10 years. This committee led the effort to obtain additional Metro funding for capital rehabilitation and replacement the first installment of which was appropriated last year. That funding will go a long way towards helping us to meet our capital needs. However, our projected funding over the foreseeable future does not bring us to where we need to be. Again, this is not unique to Metro. A recent study referred to by Administrator Rogoff by the Federal Transit Administration found that the seven largest transit systems in the U.S., including Metro, currently have a backlog of state of good repair needs totaling $50 billion. Going forward, the study concluded that these systems would need an additional $5.9 billion per year so as to not to fall further behind. We've been fortunate in that our state and local funding partners have demonstrated strong support on the capital side, just as they've done on the operating side. Over the last six years, they've provided Metro with $525 million more in capital contributions than what was needed just to match federal funds. The key, however, rests with you and your colleagues and the administration. Increased support for the state of good repair needs of older systems is essential in the next surface transportation authorization if we and other systems throughout the nation are to continue to be able to provide safe and reliable service. Metro's board is extremely pleased that it was cap able, able to convince a leader of Richard Searle's experience and capability to delay his retirement and help us address our challenges while the board seeks a new permanent general manager for the agency. In his first few weeks here, Mr. Searle's has demonstrated a deep understanding of the issues facing Metro, and he's moving forward aggressively in a number of areas as he's covered in his testimony. The Metro Board is on the verge of selecting a search firm which will conduct a national and international search for the next permanent general manager. Understanding that we wish to move forward as quickly as possible, we intend to take the time needed to conduct a comprehensive recruitment process so that we can identify the best candidate for what I can honestly say, having seen it close up, is one of the toughest jobs in the transit industry. Mr. Chairman, in conclusion, I simply want to say Metro's mission is to move people safely, reliably, and comfortably. We're committed to carrying out our mission. Bassett. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Bilbray, and uh, distinguished members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify today on the important topic of the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority's rail safety challenges and initiatives. Today's hearing is of great importance to the rail transit industry, the citizens of the Washington area, and our, and our nation's transit riders and workers as a whole. The Tri-State Oversight Committee, or TOC, is a joint effort between Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia to oversee WMATA's rail safety and security efforts. We review their accident investigations, approve key safety documents, evaluate corrective actions, 
and periodically audit their safety procedures and programs. Dating back even before the tragic red line collision of June 22, 2009, the talk noted significant shortfalls in Metro's safety efforts. Accident investigations were not always completed. Safety hazards sometimes went reported, while others were reported to no avail. WMATA's responses to the TOC's information requests were often delayed or inadequate. Audit findings went unaddressed, and as our committee found in a recent assessment, significant gaps existed between operating rules and actual practice. The rail agency's significant funding challenges only compounded the inherent hazards of an aging rail system. However, I am here today to inform the committee and the Congress that in the last 10 months, WMATA has made significant and commendable progress in changing its agency culture, in addressing backlog action items, in improving their responsiveness to our committee, and in bolstering safety to communication across departments. Initiatives such as their cross-discipline, multi-agency, right-of-way worker protection task force and interdepartmental efforts to resolve open corrective actions have charted a way forward. Our policy leadership of the and a committee have also taken crucial steps to strengthen and improve our oversight of the Metro Rail System's safety. Yesterday morning, Governor Robert McDonald of Virginia, Governor Martin O'Malley of Maryland, and Mayor Adrian Fenty of the District of Columbia jointly committed to an interim program to augment the talk's accountability, independence, and authority. The met by these measures, by coordination with policymakers, these measures coordinate with policymakers, improve public access to our reports and information, provide the talk chair with additional authority, and start to evaluate long-term plans for Metro safety oversight. Along with committee monthly meetings with the WMATA interim general manager and quarterly public interaction with the WMATA board, most recently on April 10th, the talk is entering a new phase in our relationship with Metro as well as with the riding public. WMATA still faces major hurdles in improving the system's safety, especially those related to improving safety communication, addressing backlogged action items, and resolving open investigations. It is essential that the transit agency maintain the momentum it has worked hard to generate in recent months. The recent Federal Transit Administration audit provided a valuable assessment for WMATA and the TOC, and we are working diligently to respond to these findings prior to the deadline early next month. The talk looks forward to working with WMATA, the FTA, the National Transportation Safety Board, and the Congress to sustain this progress and to ensure that it translates into real and lasting change. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions. Peter. Good morning to the committee. Thank you for your invitation to appear before you today to share our insights, concerns, and suggestions on improving safety and service within the Metro Rail system. My statement details issues that you are well acquainted with, so I will focus on items that you may not be familiar with. WMATA's apparent inability to initiate effective internal investigations based upon the evidence to institute effective safety changes continues to inhibit their ability to move towards a safer system. Unfortunately, we meet and talk a lot, but action is needed. Failure to implement, implement needed procedural changes and the lack of oversight to do it quickly continues to compromise safety and service delivery. I would note that there is a tendency to blame individual employees looking, instead of looking for underlying systemic causes of safety related incidents. Local 689's experience concerning the investigations lead us to belief that WMATA has not implemented several key measures that would make the metro rail sy system safer. Urgency and rapidity will be the hallmark of suggested changes we are offering below. WMATA must consider instituting the following without delay. Multiple layers and redundancy of safety protections. Codification of, of standards for track worker safety similar to the Federal Trans Railroad Administration track worker safety standards. Clear and concise communication between workers and controllers clear notification and designation of work areas and zones on the right-of-way, effective worker safety training and retraining, supervisory enforcement of safety standards, a contractual process for WMATA employees to appeal the standards they believe to be incorrect or unsafe such as, safety appeal, such as a safety appeals board, meaningful whistleblower protection to ensure that employees are not fearful of reporting precise safety problems, effective labor management safety committees, 
WMATA's commitment to rapid development and implementation of procedures and standards that are calculated to improve safety immediately and in the long term. Short and long term solutions likely to address budget shortfalls currently confronting WMATA must be seen in the context of the impact insufficient funding has on workers, riders, businesses, and overall development in the three ju jurisdictions hosting the system. Public transportation will never be profitable. It is an expensive pl public service. The critical nature of funding and the lack thereof has a major impact on the riding public and WMATA employees who are, who are our members. We have struggled with wage and benefit issues for the last three years and have been victimized by WMATA's failure to adequately plan for expected labor cost increases. Beyond the impact of wages and benefits is the impact of, public, of the public as safety as service cuts are becoming standard practice to help close the budget gaps. I will emphasize the need for flexibility in capital budget allocation in order to allow for capital funds to cover operating costs. The union has suggested the following alternative approaches to job and service cuts WMATA believes necessary because the budget shortfalls it is experiencing. Review carefully. A formula, the formula grant that is used as a basis of federal funding to consider adjusting the percentage allocated to Metro. Look at reducing the number of parking spaces at Metro stations to induce greater use of the system. Lobby, the est lobby to establish a dedicated funding source from the jurisdictions. Consider recapturing tax incentives given to businesses that surround metro stations. They should bear a greater share of the cost because they gain a greater benefit as a result of their location. The federal transit benefit should be indexed to both increase use and inflation. It would get an annual increase automatically to reflect the real cost of providing increased service and any increased costs resulting from inflation. Consider supporting the development of the outer spokes of the system to increase ridership and revenue from business development likely to occur around the stations. Local 689 supports the selection of a permanent general manager for WMATA who is a seasoned top transit top level manager with vision knowledge anchored by the political savvy most likely to garner public, private, and government support that will nurture the critical system in our nation's capital. We believe the general manager should be a person capable of forming alliances, fostering tri-state cooperation, encouraging legislative affinity for addressing the needs of mass transit while possessing the background that comes from long-term involvement in managing and developing a sizable system. But without true overhaul of the Metro Board, any general manager selected will have serious pressure because of the, the micromanagement style. I would be pleased to address any questions you might have in regard to my testimony, and I thank you on behalf of my members and the writing public. Thank you, Ms. Jeter. Mr. Albert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Bill Bray, and members of the committee. Thank you for inviting me to testify today. My name is David Alpert, and I am the District of Columbia Vice Chair of the WMATA Riders Advisory Council. I also report on and advocate for transit and better urban design through my website, greatergreaterwashington.org. The Riders Advisory Council has 21 members appointed by the WMATA Board from the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. Members use Metro Bus, Metro Rail, and Metro Access, and represent a diverse mix of ages, backgrounds, and ways in which they use Metro. Metro experienced its worst year in history in 2009 and suffered a substantial loss of public confidence. The June 2009 crash on the red line and subsequent track worker fatalities catalyzed that change and accelerated awareness of the larger problem, the growing disrepair of the Metro infrastructure. Failing to keep the system in a state of good repair seriously threatens safety. While certainly not as dramatic as the past year's incidents, Crowded platforms following service disruptions, crumbling platform tiles, and out-of-service elevators and escalators are significant recurring safety concerns. Renewing the local Metro Matters funding agreement, which is currently under negotiation, is essential. 
The Council appreciates Congress's support for the $150 million annual federal capital funding for WMATA last year and hopes Congress will continue to provide these funds. Unfortunately, even continuing that appropriation annually and renewing the Metro Matters Agreement leaves WMATA about $3.4 billion short of its identified capital needs over the next 10 years. In addition, WMATA must secure support for its operating budget. Closing the currently projected $190 million operating budget gap for fiscal year 2011 will likely require both significant fare increases and substantial service cuts. Riders are not the only ones who benefit from good transit. The entire region benefits economically. The federal government benefits from greater productivity. And drivers benefit from reduced congestion on roadways. For that reason, the Riders Advisory Council and transit advocates have asked local jurisdictions to increase their contributions enough to forestall severe service cuts. The Northern Virginia counties have taken the greatest steps in this area, explicitly making room in their budgets for greater support for transit. Some representatives, including many Maryland state delegates and county council members, have expressed their support. However, that has not yet translated into meaningful action, and there remains a great deal of uncertainty about the amount the funding jurisdictions can or will ultimately provide. Safety must top the list of Metro's core values. Effective oversight is also critical to maintaining safety and customer confidence in transit. Still, safety cannot exist in a vacuum. Statistics show that commuting by rail is approximately 34 times safer than driving. Mandates that improve safety while maintaining service quality can greatly enhance transit. Mandates that impair service in the long run in the name of safety will only drive commuters to other, more dangerous modes of travel. We are pleased that Congress is taking a strong interest in the safety and success of the Washington area's transit system. At the same time, safety for commuters does not start and end with Metro Rail. A USDA employee was killed after the recent snowstorm walking to the Branch Avenue Metro Rail Station in Prince George's County, Maryland, where the sidewalks had not been cleared. A military truck driver closing roads for the recent nuclear security summit killed a bicyclist last week right in downtown DC. WMATA safety issues have received considerable press recently, but the degree of press attention has been so great specifically because metro rail fatalities are so rare. While fatalities on roadways are common to the point that we have become inured to these tragedies. This Congress should not ignore these larger safety concerns and could draw needed attention to them by also conducting oversight into the ways in which our roadway designs, snow removal policies, and traffic law enforcement succeed or fail at maximizing the safety of commuters on all modes. A safe, reliable, well-maintained, and adequately funded metro system will enrich the entire region, notably including the federal government. I thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony and would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Alpert. And I must say your, your website that you reference is a very useful resource uh, I think for all of us. And I join you in calling upon our local jurisdictions uh, to do what they can now uh, to help ease the difficult choices that Metro is going to have to make that you, you, you pointed out. Uh, let me start out by asking some questions of Mr. Sorrells and Mr. Uh, Benjamin. Uh, we heard from Mr. Rogoff in his testimony, and obviously you've familiarized yourself with the uh, FTA report. Uh, there was also uh, the report that was commissioned uh, by WMATA uh, by the former, uh, former general manager, uh, Mr. David Gunn, and I assume you're familiar with that report, right? Is that right? Both? Okay. Uh, you